Hello, welcome back to my channel, to the third part of my pinhole series building my do-it-yourself camera Pinhof 9x12. What I want to show you is improvements I did and already some first pictures, which I will show you in a second. But maybe let's start with some five improvements. The first improvement for sure is the camera need a name. And so far I described already the name will be Pinhof 9x12. This is the camera name and uh, let me introduce you a short video how to do it. Because it is quite simple and uh, it comes along with another improvement. The view area, so the angle of view in the vertical and in the horizontal definition. So it makes life much more easier if you are in the field and you did, do not need to guess where to go. It's just finding the lines in portrait or horizontal mode. We need to print out what we want to have written on our camera. So here I have some text and some lines. The lines are describing, based on the film plane, the angle of view, depending from the size from the film plate to the pinhole size. After that I will mark the vertical and horizontal direction directly related to the pinhole diameter in the middle. Here we see the film holder. And what I want just to remark is that there is an additional 5 mm to think about where the film plate is. So this has to be taken in consideration for finding the right reference of our angle. After printing we bring it on the top surface where we want to have the markings. We fix the paper with some tape, mark it again and orientate the final position also for the second part, which is in our case the portrait mode. After that we take a ball pen and just heavily write again on that we can see a marking on the wood after we release the paper. This is important because we need the markings for the soldering iron later. Same with the text, position, yeah, here I'm thinking about front plate or on the left side, so I decided for the left one. After positioning, marking again with the ball pen. Sometimes it's good to redraw with a pencil to make the line more visible. Using the soldering icon for burning the markings into the wood. Job done and doesn't it look pretty? The second improvement is to add a leveler. So the leveler is one of these uh, small round ones which you can buy uh, in round or in rectangular shape. So I decided for round because this round I just took a, a bigger drill like this one, just bigger, put in some glue and glued in again this leveler like this. Very simple, easy to do. One thing you need to take care here for this second improvement uh, is if you glue in the leveler then be sure that the pinhole camera or the body is standing on a leveled area like flat plate. So this needs to be in level and this one will be in level if you adjust it. Another improvement is the shutter lock or the shutter final position. 
Therefore, very simple. You just take the shutter as you want to have. So in this case I want to have it horizontal. Then you take a drill, find the position where you want to drill a small hole and then you take one of these round wood pieces and just place it inside after drilling the hole, glue it together and wait until the glue is dried and that's it. Very helpful because you did not take care if you press the shutter further down or not. Now we turn the camera. Another improvement is the lock. Locking the film cassette to the body. As I showed you during part one or two, I said we do it with only one. Only one will still work. So it's like that. Then you take the diameter 15, I guess it was, put it in and that's it. Stable, will not move, nothing. But sometimes I was not sure, it could be, but not 100% sure, that it could be better to add a very small one. I guess it's around 8 millimeters in diameter. So this will fit further down and keeps the lower body of the film uh, holder in position. And then the bigger one, so this is uh, 15, so this is 20. Don't do too much, so you come again a bit further high and it will also clamp this to the body of the camera. Next improvement, done. Very simple, but really helpful. The last one is maybe a bit more complex, but even not that. So when I did some pictures, but still not sure if the metering was correct, or if I have some light leaks, maybe this could also be, or if here you will, we will see here there's something, and uh, same same here, there are strange things. So there's still something with light leaks maybe in. I did this using using this light and uh, now you see in the video that it's just putting the light directly on the material and uh, walking through all the the, the edges where, where, where there could be a light leak, walking around with this um, light torch around the pinhole. So what did I do against after detecting that there have been some light leaks? So what I did is very simple. I used another black color. In this case, in this case, not a spray paint, but a paint with just to do it with the brush. So and then I painted inside everything with the brush. And after checking again, you will not see any light except the light coming through the pinhole. So for today, we have done several optimizations. In total, if I count right, five. So we have the title, we have the lines, we have the leveler, we have the clamping, we have the attachment, 
and we have solved the light leak problem. So it is between 5 and 6 as you like to count it. So this was the very short video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to talk to you. Please like and subscribe. This would be good for the channel. And I uh, hope to see you soon. Then we are on the field and we do some test tries. What we will do is, this is just a few for the next video. I bought another new paper. I bought a Fumapan uh, paper uh, multigrade, which I can also use then for printing and which I can use for, uh, for, for developing in the camera. That is the one thing I will try. And another improvement which I need to test out is a filter on my camera. Here I have a, a sample set of leaf filters. And this, this leaf filter sample that gives me every color uh, which I can think about to use. And especially for black and white pictures, I guess, red or yellow filter or orange filter is a good one. And for this one, I will just choose this red filter here, or this, yeah, it's red filter. And stick it somehow here on top of the pinhole. I hope you did like and enjoy this video. So if yes, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. This would help the channel and uh, give me a big motivation. Still, my target is to reach 600 subscribers this year. So let's do it. And yeah, hope to see you soon. Stay healthy and see you. Bye.